Is there a go logo somewhere? Can you? Because right now, you know, we're on the go train to go train. Hey everyone, my name is Zach. I'm a 22 year old competitive bowler from Canada, currently living near Toronto. Welcome back to the Conk Climb Training Series, where I record most of my training, provide in depth analysis of every session, and just chat about climbing with an emphasis on competition. So, we're back for day two of training, and we've got an hour long bowler session on the program for our session one. And I decided to go to Joe's for the session. Um, remember, like a few weeks back when we had a session at Joe's, they have a dedicated comp wall with three different uh, comp style circuits at three different levels. So they have the pink tape circuit, which you can see I'm hopping on right now, which is the hardest circuit. And what they do is they set this once a week. I don't think I actually mentioned this in the, in the first video we did at Joe's, but you get a new fresh three circuits every week. Um, and I think Friday is the day they set. And so today was a uh, Thursday and I was like, hey, uh, if I don't go to Joe's today, I'm gonna miss out on this uh, comp set. And that'll just be, you know, four nice comp style bowlers that I just would have to miss out on. So uh, I'm definitely, especially when we're in Toronto, like we have good gyms around this area, but there's definitely not a whole lot of hard boulders. So when I'm planning my sessions, like which gyms to go to, I'm like extra meticulous about like making sure I'm optimizing and getting the maximum value from all the boulders that are like put out in the area. So it would be silly for me to go have a boulder session at Climbers Rock um, and like do boulders that aren't going anywhere and then skip out on these boulders at Joe's that I would not have the opportunity to get on if I didn't go here today. And I also just love Joe's and their comp style bowlers are really good, so I wanted to have a session here. So yeah, we are just doing a regular bowler session, sort of a bit unfocused, you know, no agenda, no comp simulation, we're just climbing around for... Actually, the session is not an hour long, it's an hour and 15. So I got an hour 15 long session to try uh, the bowlers at Joe's. And so yeah, they got four hard pink tapes on the wall, and I'm starting with this one. Usually, uh, in the, uh, the past few couple months there's like maybe one pink tape that I struggle like quite a bit with and then the others are usually a bit softer I think uh, the setting is like the setters are just a bit conscious of this they'll usually have like sort of four pinks that kind of there's one sort of easier one and they even between the four pinks they sort of progress up in difficulty and so this one that we're getting on here is like the really really hard pink and uh, you can see I'm like trying a bunch of different beta this boulder is really cool I was also noticing a bit today that I, I was like I'm was really wrecked from yesterday's day of training like two spray wall sessions that's like going to be super intense and my grip strength was quite tired for today and that's sort of the nature of a high volume training phase as well is that you know i'm not trying to go into every bowler session trying to be super fresh and trying to perform like we have been in the past few weeks while we were in a performance cycle so this set, um, training cycle is quite the opposite right i'm kind of going into every bowler session expecting to be tired and expecting to not be performing at my maximum capabilities and I was just already starting to feel it a bit today. And having like said all that, it's also like super, it's almost like uh, extra potent because we're just entering the first two weeks of a heavy training cycle. And my body was like very shocked. My system was shocked to do like two intense spray wall sessions right off the bat. And so I was definitely feeling it today. Like my grip strength power just wasn't quite as fresh. That being said, I'm still enjoying like a bit of the movement skills that I've uh, been sort of perfecting in the past two weeks. I definitely felt myself uh, still being able to move really well on the wall today. My grip strength was just tired since we worked it really hard yesterday. And this boulder was like a bit of uh, both. We had some elements of movement on here for sure and some elements of grip strength. Um, I'm trying this boulder a lot as you can see. Like I thought this one looked a little bit tricky but I didn't realize it was going to be turning into like a mega project. I was like working this for a while and a while and I was starting to lose hope that I'd actually be able to send the boulder. Um, you see I'm like struggling a bunch with my beta here. This uh, pinch on the volume, there's obviously like a little thumb catch on the left volume was really starting to not work for me. So I started to try this beta where I climb over to the left and I sort of try and wrap the, the thumb catch and use it almost as, as like a Gaston. But what happened was that uh, method was like really pumpy and it was too tiring for me. Whereas this uh, pinch beta just felt a bit low percentage. Um, and so yeah, I, I'm like trying it a few, I kind of give up on the, the physical way because it's just starting to pump me out too much. And on this attempt here, 
I'm kind of just like hoping to find something new. I get into this position on the double Gaston's and then check this out, my two knees. I accidentally find this double knee bar and then all of a sudden I get super nervous. I'm like, whoa, okay, I think I can send the boulder now. I'm like, I, I have time to like play around with the volumes and just get super nicely set up for the finish. But I just, this last move was deceptively big. It looks like it's just, okay, you know, you jump for the volume and it's it looks pretty good and it is, but it's so, it's like really deceptively big that even just when I had like a good setup for it, I couldn't stick the move and I'm like starting to get really frustrated now I'm like falling on this finish move a bunch of times from the start and so here I'm like I finally go and I try something that I thought of while I was sitting on the mat looking at the, this bowler before this attempt look how how easily I'm about to do this last move so what I'm doing with my left hand is a tip of the day that I had from a few videos ago like a while ago I think it was in my skin sanding routine video like that was sort of the theme of the episode I will link the video where I cover this tip of the day in the description if you want to revisit it. But it's also going to be today's tip of the day because it was like, I'm going to reuse it because it was just super potent. And when it was the tip of the day from the last episode, it actually, it was one of the, the days where I like brought up an old clip to show a tip of the day when we were doing a workout. And so it didn't actually happen in, in that day of training. But it's nice. Today, it, it's actually very, very potent. Like this tip of the day saved me on this boulder and it's the twisted thumb grip. So the way I'm grabbing... Um, with this volume, I'm going to do a close-up of it in a second after I send this boulder, which I was very uh, psyched to do. I was starting to lose hope, and then this tip of the day absolutely saved my life. Like, look how easy I do the last move now. And this this um, this grip position, when it when it like works, it really works. So here here's a nice little close-up Matt is getting of me. Um, so the normal way to kind of pinch volume, you know, you just kind of you know you have your thumb to the side like this. But if you do this twisted grip, this is sort of the perfect instance to do it as well. In the last episode where I talked about this, I described the situation where the most common ways you'll find this um, thumb grip being uh, useful is when you have a thumb catch that's directly like lining up to the seam of a volume. So you'll notice how this thumb catch is like right up against the edge of the volume. And this is the perfect way where your thumb fits really nicely onto a thumb catch. And if you were to grab it as a normal pinch, you're going to get less surface area on your thumb. You're just going to sort of get the pad. Whereas if you turn your hand in like this, you get sort of all of the meat of your thumb and you just get more surface area and friction to play with. And it can just feel like it's such a locked in position. It almost feels like, you know, when you do a hand jam and it's really nice and it's almost like you're not even like you're flexing your hand, but you just feel sort of locked in. And you don't even have to squeeze very hard. It's almost similar to that in the idea of like when I sort of, start squeezing my thumb and my palm like this, it almost doesn't feel like a normal climbing grip. It almost feels like I'm locking my hand in, in a different way and it feels super secure. And it just turned that pinch into like a bucket, honestly. And it's, and this is like the, the almost the great thing about, another great thing about me making these videos and making, trying to force myself to come up with a tip of the day all the time is that I like really re-emphasize these things. And so I remember uh, when I was like looking at that hold and I was thinking back to, um, the video where I talked about this twisted thumb grip and I'm like, oh yeah, I should try it on this boulder. And so by sort of like talking about these moves and like really trying to have them on my mind all the time, it's really great for me to learn. And so I'm really helping drill this in my brain because they're easy to forget. That's sort of what I'm getting at is like, I, I, this is something I've known about for a long time, this sort of grip position, but it's really easy to forget and forget when you should apply it. But, uh, just the more like times that I force myself to talk about and think about these, uh, tips and tricks. I learn and I, they just stay fresh in my brain and I forget them less. And so I was, had a great reminder of it today and I'll be on the lookout for these sort of pinches uh, going forward because it can be, it was like, it saved me on that boulder. I wouldn't have sent that boulder with just the normal pinch because that hold was so bad when I was just trying to pinch it normally. Um, but the thumb grip just made it so good. So yeah, we're now, uh, we're moving on with the session. I'm still, uh, I worked that boulder for about like almost an hour. And so now I only have like 20 minutes to go try the three other pink tapes. Like I said, there's four. Um, but yeah, usually there's like, there's one like really hard one and then yeah. the one, not all of them are going to be that as hard as like the, the hard one usually. So yeah, the yellow one was cool. Uh, uh, I really like the fit volumes as well. And then now, uh, we got like the slab is sort of facing the comp wall. And I think what happens is every other week they set a pink tape on the slab, uh, and then they'll alternate between like a pink tape or like one of the easier tapes, uh, week by week. And so I'm glad that I didn't miss out on the Joe session today because I got to do the pink tape slab. And they usually set like a really good slab here when they put a pink tape on this wall. And um, yeah, that also like reminds me. So the head setter of this gym, his name is Adam, Adam Tatran. He's like been a climber in Ontario for a long time, setting for a long time. And he was telling me today that he's actually going to uh, stop setting full time in a few months or something. 
And I was like really bummed to hear about that. Adam is such a talented setter and this guy sets world-class boulders. He's a head setter here. He's like, you know, all these comp circuits. We're gonna be going to coming to Joe's a lot and I'm gonna feature the comp ball a lot in the next few weeks and you're gonna see just all these epic boulders. He is, he's, he's really, really creative. And you know, I'm, I, he, so he's also the set at, sets at, uh, up the block, which I've climbed at for a long time. And I, when we climbed up the block a few weeks ago, I said I credited up the block for a lot of my comp style movement uh, development and by extension, his, his setting. And so Adam has been a big, you can see him actually in the background in the back, right? He's got the hat with the back, uh, backwards hat on. Adam, I'm going to credit him for like a lot of my development in terms of comp style climbing. Like I've just climbed on his boulders for a long time and he's a great guy. I've always loved chatting uh, to him about his boulders and like talking about things and learning things with him. And I feel like it kind of sucks a bit because in Toronto, there, especially nowadays, there aren't as many national team members um, in the area and like people have moved away and whatnot. And even Maddie and I have moved away and we're going to move to Montreal. And so his like world-class setting ability almost goes a bit underappreciated. And that's not to say that people don't like love his setting, like of course they do, but his like top tier like hard boulders and his like really creative movements, uh, often I, f I feel like people just like, because there's not a lot of high level climbers that they don't get the chance to appreciate it. Like this guy should be setting at like the, the uh, US, you know, team center or something. But anyway, yeah, I just want to say like, thanks to Adam for all of his amazing boulders over the years. I think he said he's going to do, still do some freelance route setting, but just like not full time anymore. But yeah, Adam uh, helped me become uh, a good comp style climber. So thanks. And it was nice to run into him again today. And we'll get, be getting on his boulders for the next few weeks as well, which is going to be quite exciting. So after our morning session of bouldering in Toronto, it was back to Climbers Rock, our home base, to do our workout. And so now it has been uh, even just a few weeks since we've done a workout. Um, and even more so than that, it's been a long time since I've done like a proper heavy duty, like long, intense, like I want to break my body kind of workout. Um, we've just been doing like some kind of bare bones workouts recently because we're obviously going into like a moderate peak for nationals. But now it's time to like break down the body, break down the muscles and start getting them stronger. So we got a big workout on the program. Uh, I started this workout at 4.30 today and then I ended up finishing at 7.30. So it was like exactly three hours in total since I started hanging on the hangboard to warm up and then I finished my last set of splits. So it's, and, and I'm like supersetting all these exercises too. So like, remember I was talking about in the previous video, if I don't supersize these, superset a lot of the exercises, this workout is just too, too long. So it's like three hours in total for me with the supersets. So I guess I have a, a couple of sort of basic things to mention about how I'm like going to film my workouts. So what, what you can expect to see from my workouts going forward is I always film one set. So you'll notice I do like two reps of my hangs in that, in that uh, first clip. That was like one set, right? Because I do two reps. And then same thing here with pinch block. I'm going to film, you know, two reps on each hand. And I'm just going to be filming one set of everything uh, just so you kind of understand what's being shown on the screen. And then I guess there's been a few things that I've sort of missed and I haven't covered and talked about how I go about doing my workouts in the past and like just basic things that are kind of obvious in my mind because I do them all the time, but I don't sort of, um, you know, verbalize in the, in the videos. So when I say that I do two reps of an exercise and five sets, so you'll notice obviously in the top left of your screen, I have uh, my reps listed as two, sets five, and then I have a three minute rest. So that three minute rest is um, what I do between the sets. So like I do two reps here for this pinch block, two on each hand. And basically in between reps, I basically take just as, lo as much a long of a rest as I want. I try to keep it, it's so for my hangs and my pinch block, I try to keep the rest between reps about 30 seconds. And there's no sort of reason for this. It's sort of just arbitrary and what I've sort of developed as, as like a feeling over the years. But then my reps between my sort of exercises like like one arms and jump squats and these sort of like the next row of exercises that you'll see in the program uh, I usually try to keep my rest between reps uh, at a, a maximum like 10 to 15 seconds so you'll notice here I wasn't able to execute all five one arms in a row and I have to take like a break in between my reps um, but I try to keep the the break in between my reps uh, no longer than 15 seconds otherwise it just means that I probably have to reduce the weight of whatever exercises that I'm doing like I don't want to do five reps of Look, so let's say we're doing one arms at three reps and I'm adding like 10 pounds. Uh, if I have to take like a minute in between every rep in order to do 10 pounds, I have to go down a weight. That's sort of the point. Um, but hangs and pinch block is a bit different. I sort of basically treat the reps as like I can rest however long I want in between. And then 
uh, all these next sort of exercises that we're going to be going into, I try to keep the rest between the reps uh, at capped at 15 seconds. And then, yeah, so you can see here at the top left, we have three sets of all of our exercises, exercises to do. And then we're doing four minutes rest in between the sets. So we do our reps, 10 to 15 seconds max rest between the reps, but I'll try to do as many in a row as I can. And then we do three sets of all of this and with four minutes rest in between each set. And then, um, as you'll notice, like, so we're doing a superset here. This is just to make the workout go by faster. And I do all, I, when I do these supersets, again, same sort of thing. I just take uh, about however long of a rest I want in between like finishing my one arm and then going to start my jump squats. And, uh, and then, yeah, you'll notice how I have my weights listed. So we got zero pounds, uh, dash 30 pounds. It can be kind of confusing, I guess, if you don't understand, but it's just like the one arms are the zero pounds and then 30 pounds are the jump squat. Um, it's not like a range. That's just how I list them. And so, yeah, we're doing like 15 pound dumbbells in each hand for the jump squats. And that is going to total for 30 pounds. And I guess it's been a while since I featured this exercise as well. The jump squats. I really like, uh, these, this exercise, the way to jump squats. The idea is you lower down a little bit, like as controlled as you can into a squat position. And then you want to explode as fast as possible out of the jump squat. So you don't want to, you want to control, control your momentum on the way down. And then as soon as you hit like sort of the halfway mark, now you explode upwards. And this exercise is actually quite interesting. It's sort of in between, um, like, uh, it's, it, it is like a plyometric, but it, it's funny how my, you, the jump looks so slow, right? It's because even with a bit of weight added, it is really hard to explode out of a jump squat. And so I find it's like almost like a, a very slow, almost like a static plyometric, if that makes sense. But basically I like to sort of do these a ways out from a competition and then I'll increase the weight a little bit, but the idea is to also increase the explosiveness. So it's kind of hard to gauge when to go up in weight because you also want to be going up in explosiveness. Um, but yeah, it's a really great exercise and it's a lot of fun to uh, track your progress. And I really feel like once I do this for a few weeks, my jumping power gets like really strong and it helps for like distance based dinos where, um, you know, a lot of your momentum is going to be generated from your legs. So I love this exercise and I definitely recommend it. So now our next super set is dips with dips with pistol squats. I did 50 pounds for my dips today and then uh, no weight on the pistol squats. Uh, again, since this is our first um, workout in a long time, and also the first time I'm doing some of these exercises in a while, like especially deadlift when we get to it, I'm just like going really low with the weight. I just sort of want to get the muscle memory back for all these exercises just because it's our first work workout. And then I bet even just by the next workout that we do, the weights will probably jump a bit for all the exercises. So I could probably maybe add a bit of weight to the pistol squats if I wanted to, but uh, I'm going to just keep it at no weight for today just to get the body back used to it. And then speaking of deadlift, here we are deadlifting. I have not deadlifted on the comp climb series at all. And I did a lot of deadlifting in the past, like the year, like basically right before I started comp climbing, I was deadlifting for a while. And it was like a, something new that I had been incorporating. And I really love it. It's like just great. I find it's really great for training like um, intense undercling power. That's what I, the biggest thing, the reason I'm training deadlift. And as you'll notice from this video, my deadlift is a bit rusty. Like again, so I just sort of put two 45 pound plates on the bar because I was just treating this session as sort of getting the technique back and getting the muscle memory back rather than trying to like destroy myself. And I, even just like looking at the video now, I can tell that my stance is a bit too wide. Um, my legs, uh, the way I was taught to do deadlift properly is to have a bit of a more narrow stance, like have your feet at shoulder width apart and then try to have your arms go straight down. Looking back on the video, my arms are like sort of out to the side and again, also with my feet. And uh, that's just like not optimal for deadlift. So I'm going to correct that. And it, it's good to like start a bit light so I can get this mu muscle memory and technique back. And then, yep, we superset a deadlift for, for military press, uh, which I was able to do 70 pounds, which actually isn't too bad for me. Like that isn't too light. Uh, so that was that was nice. And then if you'll notice, like the I try to superset my exercises, like with sort of contrasting uh, muscle groups. I find it just also helps um, maximize your value from your exercises while also trying to maximize time. So the way I do my work is I try to maximize time and value. So I maximize time by supersetting, but I maximize the value from the exercise by um, not doing, you know, pistol squats and jump squats as a superset, because that's a bit silly. Um, but then, yeah, we finished the workout with front splits and side splits. I am going to start filming this, like I mentioned. Uh, I, st I started to do my splits off camera, but then what happened is I just got lazy and I didn't do it all the time. And so I'm going to force myself to film it, put it in every video and even just speed it up. So it's not boring, uh, just to keep myself accountable. And then if I, if you see, if you see front splits or side splits missing from an episode, then you have to yell at me in the comments cause I skipped it and I was lazy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that wrapped up workout. I am already so destroyed. Like even just after finishing, 
it was really intense, but I, I'm, I'm really excited to, you know, it's, it's part of, part of the fun of training is just destroying yourself and like waking up the next day, super sore. And that's definitely the training phase that we're in. So I'm excited for more of this going forward. So that wraps up a fun day of training. Tomorrow's a rest day for me. Uh, very much need a rest day. I'm exhausted. And then the day after the rest day, we're going to be having a fun session. I think I lined up a moon board session with my buddy, Ben, and that's going to be at a gym in Toronto and that's going to be a lot of fun. So tune in for that. <clears throat> Enter a catchy video show here.